the Commander X16 monitor. To access the monitor, like the AR-28 and the AR cart, you enter monitor. Like the AR, mon. Or use the basic token, M-Shift-O. Unlike the 128 and AR, it is mapped to F2. And it seems you can't change it. The monitor is the Final Cut 3 monitor, although a recent video by the 8-bit guy points out this probably won't be used on the final release. Not a great loss to be honest, but the very brief and limited view of the replacement gives me reservations. When you enter the monitor, you are given the current state of the machine. You get a 4 hex digit address. The IRQ should show you the current IRQ vector and allow you to change it. However, this value shows none of the 300 vectors nor the FFFO vectors, so I have no idea what it's showing. Best to ignore it, I feel. The BK is the current bank you are viewing. On the 64, this is the 01 CPU register, but on the CX16, this is the RAM or video bank number. The accumulator, X register and Y register, and stack pointer. The FC3 breaks the flags out individually. Let's enter some code to make the background black. I can't do the border as the CX16 doesn't have one. FC3, like the AR cart, uses colon for daylight entry. Like the AR, it is strict. Four digits for address and two digits per byte. Unlike the AR cart, it doesn't need all eight digits to be entered on a line. Unlike the 1 to 8 monitor, it always shows eight digits even in 80 column mode, and any numbers beyond the eighth are ignored. Let's make sure I've typed that in correctly. Again, the D command is used. Like the AR cart, D will show one line if you specify one address. Also, like the AR cart, you can freely scroll up and down at the top and bottom of the screen. F5 will scroll up and F7 will scroll down. Unlike the AR cart, it only scrolls while you hold the key and doesn't start auto scrolling. This sadly means you can't use it to get a blank line. As the editor is 64 spec, there are no 1 to 8 escape codes either. Also, F5 and F7 only work in 40 column mode. In 80 columns, they default to their defined values. Note the range is inclusive. While I guess control, as per the 64, can be used to slow the scrolling, it doesn't seem to work. Not sure if this is just because the VIAs are not implemented enough, or if the pause at 8 MHz is so small you can't tell. Let's run the code. Once again, the G command is used. As the code ends in break, it will enter back into the monitor. The FC3 monitor counts break as a single byte opcode, so the PC is plus one upon entry. Let's change the color. One thing to note about the FC3 cart is the comma view doesn't let you modify the code, only the hex. So to update a line with opcodes, you need to place A at the start first. As you have probably guessed, there is an assemble command on A. Again, the parser is very strict. You will use dollars, and you will use two or four digits as needed. Unlike the AR card, if you make a mistake, you won't get a question mark. It will just go to the next line.
Okay, so this code should fill 500 with 0, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, AO, CO, EO. In a repeating pattern. Um, that's not what I was expecting. Must be a bug. So I'll need to set a breakpoint at 4009, which already has E8 in it. So write it down and we place a break. So A is 20, which is what I expect. Now I need to restore the code. And I'll break again on 4007, which holds 69. And now I'll repair 4007 with 69. I'll put a breakpoint on 4009 again. A is 40, which is what I expect. So we'll repair 4009, break 4007. Repair 4007, break 4009. A is 60, which is what I expect. A is 80, which is what I expect. A is AO, which is what I expect. A is CO, which is what I expect. A is EO, which is what I expect. A is zero, which is what I expect. A is 21. That is not what I expect. Oh, C was set before and now it's clear. Oh, the branch goes to 4004, not 4003, so it doesn't C or C before the add. Whoops. We'll just repair and fix the code. And go from the start. Perfect. Now imagine we only had 25 lines and not 60. Yeah, we would have had to type it again and again and again and again and again and again. You might be wondering, why didn't I do the hello example as before? Well, you can't. Let me demonstrate.
Now let's just put a breakpoint on the INX. That is easiest. Okay, we got a H up the top left of the corner of the screen. Now I'll restore the code and we'll go again. Now there is a black square, a gray L and an O after the G address. That is not what my code does. How did that happen? This is a massive flaw of having port-based access. The monitor has to modify VRAM in order to print on the screen. And in doing so, it has trashed the port register state. And hence, when my code did an STA9F23, it wrote to the position the monitor left it in, so the increment is 1, not 2, hence the odd colors, and the pointer was at the end of the G command where I press return. Traditionally, such ports tend to be write-only to save gates, but at least on the emulator, they work fine read-write, so you can make code such as this. The way it works is, first of all, we save A. We then save the current active port. We then switch to the first port and save its current pointer. We then switch to the next port and then save its values onto the stack. Now we need to restore A for when we enter into the monitor. But we need to use X in order to do this. So we save X, we read A from the stack, then we restore X, and then we break. After you finish the monitor, you should jump to the line after the break, which will then restore the second port, switch back to the first port, restore the first port's value, then it will restore the active port then it restores A, and it will return. So in order to break, you will JSR to this routine. If you want to remove the breakpoint, you NOP the JSR call with three EAs. This requires planning ahead and is not something you can just drop in. However, if you wanted to, you could pull the return address off the stack, subtract three from it, and push it back. This would then allow you to patch the JSR out with the original code, similar to how the AR card handles the freeze points. Without adding this code, you cannot debug with breakpoints anything that touches the Vera, such as drawing to the screen, something that causes the cursor to flash, copying in char or tile data, adjusting scrolling registers, changing sprite data such as X, Y, tile, and color, or modifying the palette you have to treat all of these as black boxes. When designing your game loop, care needs to be taken to ensure the main loop and IRQ don't trash each other. Typically, you do screen map and char updates in the main loop and sprite updates in the IRQ. Care needs to be taken to ensure these two don't interrupt each other or the IRQ contains preservation code. Other limitations, like the 128, the CX-16 can't be frozen. Unlike the 128, screens are not independent and you can't have two of them. You can switch from 40 to 80, but they share RAM and most importantly, share port access. This means you can't get a this has results untouched and this has code without them affecting each other. This will get worse once you start redefining the character sets and switch the tile mode and put sprites on the screen. If you can save the internal state of the port registers without any on-site effects, then you can kind of emulate it, but your code will need to hand over control rather than you just taking it. Since the reset vector is under lock and key, we can't install a software reset to enter our custom debugging tool either. As it has two planes, you could with a custom monitor make it so it draws on plane 2, and your code and systems only ever use plane 1, giving you an overlay. This is the Mega Drive SNES trick, although the SNES has four planes, which helps. You can kind of do the Amiga bit plane trick, only you put yourself in 256 color mode, and only use the first 128 colors. 
set the final 128 colors to be all white, all black, or transparent purple. And then you write code that plots the debug monitor into the upper bit of the palette index. It will be very slow, but it would work. Recommendations. For learning ASM and getting started with it in an emulator versus emulator battle, Windvice slaughters. X128, as I show in the other video, is much better for taking your first steps.